everyone welcome back to my channel today i thought i'd show you how i make the dashoom house black doll in my ninja foodie max multi cooker i've made this once before and it tasted absolutely incredible the only difference between this recipe and the original is that i don't use double cream i actually make it vegan because i don't eat a lot of dairy and i even use plant-based butter but of course you could switch that out for regular butter and you can add the double cream in at the end if you want to so i'm going to make enough for four people and for this you'll need 200 grams of black lentils or urad beans as they're called olive oil or sunflower oil or any oil of your choice really garlic and ginger paste tomato puree garam masala kashmiri chili powder or if you don't have this i believe you could substitute it with paprika it basically just gives it color and it isn't too spicy salt unsalted butter and double cream if you like so i'm going to start off with about 47 grams of tomato puree you don't really have to be exact. Then I'm going in with garlic and ginger paste. If you have these both separately, then you need eight grams each. I'm gonna put in about 16 grams because mine is mixed together. There we go, I've put a bit too much in as you can see. But again, that's completely fine. So then I'm gonna go in with four grams of salt. Mine is just the pink Himalayan salt, but you can use any salt that you like. That's about four grams there. Then you need a third of a teaspoon of garam masala and a third of cashmere chili powder, but I tend to put in one full heaped teaspoon of chili powder just because it isn't very spicy, but you can do this to taste. Okay, so your paste is done and you just mix it all together. And then I'm gonna weigh out 200 grams of black lentils. Okay, so I have about 200 grams of lentils that I've rinsed in this sieve and it's just resting in like a jug of water. I'll need that water afterwards. There's my paste that I've mixed up and about 60 grams of butter. You don't have to put the butter in. Last time I actually forgot and it tasted really good without it. I've got my silicone spoon ready to go and my olive oil. And yeah, I'll show you what settings I use on my Ninja and how I cook this. It's so cool quick and the other thing i forgot to say is for this you'll need the pressure cooker lid at the end not just yet so first of all my ninja foodie has been turned on and i'm going to turn it to the sear and saute mode i'm going to set the temperature to medium high i don't need it to be that high and press start unlike a normal saucepan this doesn't take very long to heat up so i'm going to go in with my olive oil pretty much straight away then I'm just going to go straight in with my paste. Once that's in there, I just want to leave it to cook for a couple of minutes, just to cook the spices through and that ginger and garlic paste. So it's been a couple of minutes, and I'm just going to turn this off by pushing the stop button. Then what I'm going to do is go straight in with my lentils, like so. Add them all in. And now I'm going to add in some water I haven't measured my water I tend to put in about what is this about a litre so whenever you're pressure cooking the setting won't work unless you use a minimum of 250 mils of water so that's what you have to use every single time but I've used about a litre this part is kind of trial and error and it also depends on how saucy you like your dal but for me, I think this might be okay. Okay, so now that my lentils and my water, my paste, and everything apart from the butter is in, what I'm going to do is change this setting to the pressure cooking setting. Before I do that, I need to put the lid on. So you put the lid on, so you put the lid on like that. Lock it into place. At the back, there's the vent. So I flip that to seal to make sure that it is completely sealed with a spoon. It's already set to pressure, leave it on high. I set, set mine to 30 minutes. So 30 minutes it is, hit start. Now I have had a few questions on Instagram because a lot of people when they used it for the first time were like, what does this mean? I don't know why I'm using the spoon. This is basically just the pressure building so it takes quite a long time. So once the pressure's built up inside the pot, you'll see this bit stop and it'll say 30 minutes and it'll start counting downwards from 30 minutes because obviously that's cooking for whatever time you set it for. And then once that's done, automatically the red light will come on here where it says keep warm and the timer will start counting upwards. But I'll show you that when we get to that stage. For now, I'm just gonna let it do its thing and come back in about half an hour. So 
So as you can see, the pressure cooker is almost done cooking in about 30 seconds. So I'm going to quick release the pressure and I'll show you how I do it. You can naturally release it, which basically means leaving it on the keep warm mode for 10 minutes, but I don't see the point in that. I feel like it's a waste of time. So in about 10 seconds, I will quick release the pressure. And, and to do that, I'm gonna use a silicon spoon or the handle of one. So it's done. And as you can see, it's automatically switched on this, the keep warm mode. You can let this go to 10 minutes if you want to naturally release the pressure, but I don't. So I want to use this because I don't want my hand to get too close to the steam. And where it says seal um, on the little button at the back, seal's on the left, vent is on the right. I'm going to flip this. So there we go, it's almost done. It took about two and a half minutes and there's still a little bit of steam coming out. So I'm going to wait for that to just shut completely oh there we go it stopped and there's a clicking sound which i think means the lid is unlocked so i'm going to take the lid off when you take the lid off always tilt it away from you so the steam doesn't go all over your hand so i'll show you how i do it this is looking good and it smells really good too there's actually probably a bit too much water in here now for my liking I'll move the camera and show you in a second. So maybe don't put a full litre of water in. Put about 750 ml, I would say. So I stupidly forgot to press record, but all I've done <laughs> is just leave it on the keep warm mode and I've added in my 60 grams of butter. I'm just letting that melt in here, which will give it a really nice, like rich and creamy taste. But like I said, this is what mine looks like. So I wouldn't add a litre of water next time. I'd add about 750 ml. The lentils are perfectly cooked. As you can see, they're really soft. What I'm gonna do is turn off the keep warm mode, put it back on the sear saute mode, saute mode. I'm going to bring the temperature down to medium high just because I feel like when it's high it kind of splatters everywhere and just start. I'm going to let that simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes just regularly stirring it. I just want some of that extra water to evaporate and then what I tend to do is because there's only two of us and this serves about four people I will portion half of it up into individual pots and freeze it. Okay, so it's had about five minutes and I think it's done. In fact, it's really starting to thicken up and I changed it to a medium heat instead of a medium high heat. Obviously, you don't need to do this step if you don't add too much water in the first place like I did. So next time, I think I will probably stick to about 750 mils and take it from there because you can always add more and you can always get rid of the excess like I have just here. So my dal is perfect now, as you can see. What I'm going to do, which I've never actually done before, is I'm going to serve it with this garlic and coriander naan. But I can't bother to put my oven on because this is obviously so much easier. And I know this is probably going to look a bit gross, but I've seen people putting this grill rack inside. So that will just kind of warm the lentils up if I put it on the bake function and cut up the naan into pieces and put it on here. I think that's the best way of just doing both things in one pot. So I'm going to give that a go and show you how I do it. So I've cut the naan up into little quarters. They're not both going to fit at the same time, but I'll have to move it around. It's just to kind of warm it up, really. I'm going to do that. Stick the lid on. I'm going to flip this to the bacon roast function like so. Just leave it on that. I'll keep an eye on it and just press start. I'll check up on it in about four minutes or so. Okay, it's been about three minutes. I'm just going to flip the lid open and just check. Oh, you know what? This actually is perfect. So I'm going to take these two out and put the next two in. Right, so again, it's been about three minutes and these should be done. In fact, these pieces of naan are a bit smaller. Oh, yeah, these are definitely done. And there we have it. Dinner is served. Absolute perfection. Let me know in the comments below if you want more recipes like this or any other recipe suggestions and I'll try and figure out how to cook it in my Ninja multi-cooker. But thanks for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye!